He's obviously a very talented young man. I think age is irrelevant. With whom I could compare, it's Ayrton Senna. Aged just 16, it was announced Max Verstappen would become a record breaker. He'll become the youngest ever Formula One driver. Welcome to Toro Rosso. This is the story of Max's record breaking journey. This never before seen footage shows exactly what it takes to reach the top of motorsport as he joins the next generation of Formula One drivers. On August 19th, on Austrian television, the world was stunned as Max Verstappen was announced as a Toro Rosso driver for 2015, when he will become the youngest competitor in the sport's history by almost two years. You always dream to get into a F1, and then at 17, you sign a contract. I was 16, I was back then. So, uh, yeah, and then when I came home, you know, uh, I looked at my dad and we were about like, we are in F1 next year. That's, uh, that was our dream together, and uh, we made it. I never expected it that it happened that fast. Well, I knew what the reaction would be, you know, too young and uh, not good for F1, but yeah, they just read the news really. They don't really look into the results and how much work there is before you get even there. They just think I'm a 70-year-old guy who jumps in an F1 car. But we already had so much work before, you know, to get even a chance to jump in an F1 car. And that's what many people forget. And also, um, the second for stop and name now. Um, so, yeah, I think that will be really cool. Max is the son of former Formula One driver Jos Verstappen, the most successful Dutch driver of all time, who drove in over 100 Grand Prix. In 94, started in Formula One with Benetton. Till 2003, the last team was uh, Minardi, but it's now Toro Rosso, so it's a, it's a good combination. I must say, when he was young, he was always interesting in engines, motorcycles, cars, go-kart, uh, Formula One. He, he knew everything when he was small. A few times I went, you know, together with him to the races and uh, yeah, the paddock was a bit like a playground for me. So I was just running around and having fun. And uh, yeah, especially when you come back like 10 years later after that, you're like, whoa. And then uh, you think about it like seven years ago, I was just playing around here for fun. So, uh, yeah, it was quite fun. He was two and a half, he was driving a quad, and the electric Jeeps uh, he had, and he was always, you know, going as close to, to, to the walls and things, you know, not to hit. And, but he had a feeling uh, how to drive, and you could see immediately in a go-kart, you could see that he had a lot of talent. He was not pushing me, he was just, you know, if he wants to drive, I will buy him a go-kart at the end of the day. So uh, it really had to come from myself, because I think at the end, if your dad starts to push you, maybe five, six years, it will be all right, but at the end, you won't enjoy it anymore. So, uh, yeah, luckily it wasn't like that, and uh, it came, you know, completely from myself. I made many mistakes, I made stupid mistakes, but I think as soon as Max got racing, I, knew, I learned from my mistake, and I tried to, to get that through to Max, that he didn't, want, you know, didn't make the same mistakes as I did. When something happens to you, you can get, like, angry or you know aggressive and I think that's also where my dad really teach me in how to approach the race better than he did. He knew what went wrong in his career and we tried to do it better now. So uh, he was trying to make a Verstappen 2.0 really. While he has a famous surname, it was Max's results that made people sit up and take notice. Excitement and uh... Um, you know, enthusiasm there was around Max and how competitive he was immediately in Formula 3 was quite sensational. There was a race at Norris Rink, which is a tidy circuit in Nuremberg. And in the wet, he was around one and a half to two seconds per lap quicker than anybody else in the field. And there was clear there is really something very, very special. Such were his results at junior level, Max found himself being approached by several top teams in just his first year away from go-karts. 
when he started winning, of course, the others were interested, and I think every Formula One team from the top five were interested in him. Then it was clear we want him, and we want him in Formula One as soon as possible. Well, we got some phone calls, so uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, then I got the chance, you know, at the end from Red Bull, and we were well, we were already talking since 2010, I think. We got a really good feeling about it, and. At the end, yeah, I think it was mainly the feeling what made the decision. The verdict was clear. Max had the potential to be a once-in-a-generation talent, and age was no factor. In Max, we've got a really talented youngster. I think age is irrelevant, you know, whether you're Bernie Eccleston or, or you know, when I was you know, 30 coming into this, this job. It's not how old you are, it's how you conduct yourself and, and what you do. So I think um, age is just a number. The age doesn't make uh, any difference. I mean, every person is different. I think uh, it's also the way it's, Max is growing up. He's growing up with racing cars. You can't say that a driver has to reach a special age to do Formula One. He has reached such a high level from the driving side that I have no doubt that he will do a good job in Formula One. There's absolutely no doubt. I, I would definitely say it's a Capri winner and the rest we will see. I'm 100% sure that Max can reach uh, the top of the Formula 1. Max's first duty as a driver in waiting for Toro Rosso is a show car run in Rotterdam. It would be his first ever time in a Formula 1 car, with thousands watching. I think in uh, one hour or so uh, I will do a run on the bridge with a F1 car, so uh, looking forward to it. My dream was always, you know, to get to F1, and then I think when you get the first time in, in an F1 car, just uh, where you always worked for. It'll be the first time here in Holland, so uh, yeah, really excited. But his first time in the car doesn't go to plan. Yeah, I was just pushing forward, really, and I was trying to stop the car, but then, you know, the anti-stall kicks in, so it pushes you forward again. You know, it was too late to take the clutch. I was trying to take it, but I just couldn't get it on time. And I know I hit the barrier with five kilometers, I think. But at the end, it was a mistake, but you know, I think many drivers made that mistake. It was stupid, but things like that will happen. Uh, he's learning from it, and for sure, they, they won't happen again. But it's all about the experience. He doesn't have long to dwell on it, though, as he heads to meet his new team and his new boss for the first time. Welcome at Toro Rosso. Max is shown around the factory by team principal Franz Tost. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Welcome. Many guys came to me and they said they had worked even with my dad. Your father was a fantastic guy. They still remember you as a small kid walking around and then now they are working with you. So, uh, yeah, it was, it was a special feeling. And, uh, you know, when you see so many people working for two cars, it's uh, really impressive. It's always something special if a Formula One driver comes to the factory, talks to the people, let the people feel that they are part of it for their motivation. So, thank you. Tost has overseen the careers of many young drivers. I'm really convinced uh, that he has matured enough to jump into Formula One next year and be successful. The team are already planning the car he will use next year. Today they will make a mould of his body to create his racing seat. It'll ensure he's comfortable and safe in next year's car. As you can see, we are making the seat at the moment, so... Uh, yeah, there's still a lot of work to do. The seat fitting has to be done now, as in only a week, Max will take to the track in a Formula One car for the very first time.
Today we are in Adria, Italy. Uh, will be my first proper F1 test to do the 300 kilometer run for the super license. So uh, yeah, exciting. It's getting more real and real uh, all the time, you know, I, I step into the garage. Today he will complete several hundred laps in an old Toro Rosso. A necessary step in order to obtain his super license that allows him to compete in Formula One. And one of the drivers Max will be racing against in 2015 has sent him a message ahead of the test. Hey Max, I uh, heard you're going for your super license today. All the best and uh, yeah, we'll see you on the grid uh, in, I don't know, six months time or something. He's a really nice guy. Yeah, thank you. This is the first time Max will drive a Formula One car on the limit. Today he gets a chance to practice everything from starts to pit stops. Get ready to push one more lap. See that you are getting more used to the car and to deal with the tires, and uh, you are very consistent, making progress step by step. So that was good. Uh, for me, the run felt quite good. Just the last two laps, the tires were finished. That's it for today. You have done a very solid and very good job. 400 kilometers, not a single mistake. The engineers were really pleased and impressed. Yesterday when I came in here, we walk into the garage, we see the car standing there with the Verstappen, and it uh, makes me proud, I must say. And then you see him the first time going out on a track, yeah, it's something special to see him. And I must say, he's doing incredibly well, uh, he's adapting quick, and uh, yeah, it looks, looks good, really good. It's so quick, you can't imagine, like, the first few laps, your eyes, they can't keep up, and you just feel your stomach, like, in a roller coaster. It's the same feeling, but then even more aggressive. Max has also made an important decision, his racing number. It will stay with him throughout his Formula One career, even if it's his second choice. Well, my number, yeah, normally it should be three. Uh, my favorite number is three, but that's Daniel is using already, but uh, I mean, maybe 33 means double luck. A good day for Max, and he's soon cleared by the FIA to drive in free practice for the remainder of the 2014 season.